Rough Country one inch leveling kit for the Ford Bronco? Stay tuned. Now it's time to start playing with the suspension on the Northridge 4x4 base Bronco. And this thing has ran the stock lowrider stance for way too long. Now for the first lift kit, we want to start small, just to see what a very base level suspension can do. And for a very base level suspension, the Rough Country 1 inch leveling kit is about as simple as you can get. Now the first thing we notice is that the Bronco sits fairly level to begin with. So with a 1 inch leveling kit, that may just set us a little nose high. The kit itself consists of six spacer plates, three for each side. The bottom plates, they have a funny U shape to them and these go under the front strut to space it up. The top plates are round and they're drilled to match the Bronco's strut top plate and they're gonna space the strut down. Now all three plates per side stacked together don't account for much but things work differently under an IFS suspension and that's due to leverage ratios of the control arms. And that's because we're adding the spacers inboard from the wheel up the lower control arm a short distance. So we're gonna end up with more lift than the thickness of our spacer plates. Now to start our install, and you should know the drill by now, we took some baseline measurements. And we did that by measuring from the bottom edge of the wheel up to the edge of the fender and then it was time to start tearing things apart. First step is we're gonna remove the stub axle nut. It takes a 35 mil socket. Then we're gonna grab a 21 for the tie rod. Then we get a steel hammer and we're gonna give a good couple wraps right on the end here of the steering arm and that'll pop that tie rod up and out. Now you wanna make sure that you hit your hammer strikes nice and flat. And then we're gonna grab an eight millimeter socket. We're gonna take the little bolt out right here that holds our wheel sensor in place. Then we've got this 10 mil bolt right here on the back of the brake line bracket. And just spin that guy out. And that bracket can sit off to the side. Then we have our upper tie rod nut and it's 18 mil. And let's just spin it back on just a couple threads. All right, then the same trick with the hammer. Oh. Okay, so we can push up on it, loosen up this nut the rest of the way. All right, we're gonna take an air hammer. And you wanna be really careful that you don't mess up the threads on the end of the stub axle. Now with that out of the way, we'll grab a 15 mil and start loosening the nuts up here. Now you can use a ratcheting wrench for these front two. I find a ratchet with a medium length socket is easiest. You can just get it up in there. And then you got full range of motion to unscrew it. Then we have these nuts on the bottom of the strut studs. And you'll notice they leave quite a few threads sticking down below the nut. And this is a real rock catcher. And you can damage those off road and then trying to get those nuts off could be really tight. When we install the new rough country bolts, we're gonna put them in from the bottom and go up. We're gonna grab our air hammer again. Now, one of the things you'll see is a lot of people pull the knuckle completely out of the way so they can drop the lower control arm down far enough 
to get the studs up and out of the lower control arm. But by using an air hammer, we can drive that stud up and out. Carefully pop those studs up. You can see those splines right there, and that's what digs into the strut ears, the ears of the strut to anchor them in place. So sometimes you really got to get after them to pop them up and out. Let me pull our upper strut knots off. And then we can lift our strut up and she comes right out. You have three spacer plates in total. The U-shaped one is for the bottom of the strut and these two go up on the top. Now you may ask yourself, why do you need two? Is it depends on how much height you need to add. This is gonna give you, all three of them together, is gonna give you about an inch of lift. Now, if you just use one top plate, you're gonna get about three quarters of an inch lift. So maybe you don't need as much. Now you notice you've got four holes in the top. One is a little smaller, and that's to line up with the alignment pin on your top plate. And of course, this is where we'll use that old toothbrush again. All right, spacer plate number one and spacer plate number two. And we're gonna throw just a couple dots of blue Loctite on each stud. And then also on our new lower bolts. And Rough Country also includes new locking nuts. You wanna make sure you line all your holes back up correctly with that alignment pin in the back. And then we can reach up there and thread on a couple of the nuts. Then our spacer plate comes in from the back side. And then for our bolts, you'll see some people put them in from the top. We're gonna put them in from the bottom. And that way you only have the bolt head underneath to catch on stuff. The new Rough Country hardware is a little bit larger. We're still 18 mil on the nut, but now we're 19 mil on the bolt head. Now we can go back up to our upper nuts and tighten them. And they are also larger in size. They're now 17 mil. Now we grab our blue and we'll throw a little dab on the upper ball joint thread. Same with that outer tie rod. Now, as you're tightening this nut, if you start spinning the ball joint itself, you wanna use an eight millimeter wrench. Then go right down below with the, on the hex shank and hold that ball joint still as you're tightening the nut. Then don't forget your wheel sensor. And then your brake line bracket. Okay, and looking at it right off the bat, I can see that the nose is just a hair high. So let's get a tape measure on it. The rear should be pretty dang close to the same. 30 and three, uh, 30 and three quarter. Once the install was done, we sat the Bronco on the ground and settled the suspension and then took the after measurements. 
and we were not too surprised when we ended up sitting a little high in the front. So we removed one of the top spacer plates from the front and installed it on the top of the rear strut. Yes, they do have the same bolt pattern. Now accessing the top of the rear strut is much easier than the front. You just need to move the inner fender liner up and out of the way, then unbolt the top three plate nuts. Then disconnect the rear track bar, or some people call the panard, and lower the rear axle down enough to slip the spacer plate in on top of the strut. And then it's just lift the axle back up, tighten everything, and reinstall the track bar. We then settled the suspension and retook our measurements. This time we came out almost level, averaging out to be right around three quarters of an inch lift in the front and a quarter inch lift in the rear. Now another thing about IFS suspensions is any change in lift height, even a small spacer kit like this one from Rough Country, will affect the alignment, specifically the camber and the toe. And this is gonna cause both handling issues and funky tire wear. So please get your Bronco into the local alignment shop and have them do a full four wheel alignment to make sure everything is perfect. And now that we have a little more lift under this Bronco, I think it's time for a set of 35 inch tires. So stay tuned for more build videos of the Northridge 4x4 base Bronco and some action videos as we get this thing out on the trail. And then on another note, it used to be that we just had to produce videos that people watched and YouTube would promote our videos. But now it's all about that YouTube algorithm. And that promotes videos according to how many likes a video gets, the subscribers, and of course, how many people hit that little notification bell. So please do us a favor and help us grow. So to do that, hit those buttons if you haven't yet, and then leave us a comment about this video or maybe other video ideas you'd like to see. Or hey, maybe even just to say, hi, I watched till the end. And then as always, thanks for watching today. We'll see you again soon.